In today's episode, I'll play as Poland, but I'll have the Prussian monarchy with the dominant Hussite religion, and in reality, I'll be Silesia with the most powerful Hussars you've ever seen. Thanks to lessons from the Hussite wars, it will be unconquerable on its own territory. Hello, imperialists, Lucas here. Initially, the ruler of Poland did nothing because he was dead. The period of interregnum was used by social estates to gain many privileges. This also reduced military expenditures and the maintenance of garrisons in forts. As a result, significant significant sums flowed into the state budget. The parliament also funded the development of bureaucracy in the country, which was unfortunate. Poland also had several enemies on the international stage. Peace was also made with the Grand Duchy of Lithuania, and when the choice of successor came after the death of Władysław III, the proposal to establish a union with Lithuania was rejected. There was fear of increasing the influence of Lithuanian magnates. Instead, a Polish nobleman with great influence was chosen. The new ruler expressed regret over the treatment of the Czechs and Hungarians. Polish diplomacy managed to exploit the animosity between the Kingdom of Bohemia and the Archduchy of Austria. This led to the royal marriage between the Habsburgs and the Polish family. Spies were also sent to the Bohemian court to advance claims to the entire Silesian region. Yes, Silesia has always belonged to Poland. Polish guarantees to the Principality of Moldavia were also withdrawn. Instead, an alliance was formed with the Duchy of Brandenburg. This stabilization of the situation in Poland helped resolve succession issues related to the defeat at Varna. This gave the Kingdom of Poland territorial claims to most of Hungary. After several years of hard work by Polish diplomats, an alliance was formed between the Habsburgs and the Kurnatowski family. This led to a proposal from the Holy Roman Emperor of the German nation for the King of Poland to renounce his crown and join the empire as one of its princes. After brief negotiations, the Polish side agreed to this, especially since, in return, the empire supported Polish claims to the territory territory of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. Efforts were then made to stabilize Poland. Privileges were granted, allowing advisors to work for less money. Over the next few years, Austria's support was gained during wars with the Bohemia over Silesian territories. However, this was merely a clever political maneuver by the Polish ruler, as Polish troops simultaneously advanced into Hungarian territory. This prevented the Habsburgs from supporting the Hungarians. Unfortunately, due to the incompetence of Austrian commanders, Austria withdrew from the war with the Bohemia after losing battle. <laughs> As a result, Poland only gained Lower Silesia and a certain province where Hussitism was prevalent. Unfortunately, a series of revolts broke out in Poland, leading to the war with Hungary, ending with the acquisition of war reparations and only two Slovakian provinces. Meanwhile, the Polish king expanded Krakow mainly towards becoming a trade center, and the process of annexing Mazovia to Poland began. Fortunately for Poland, a Prussian rebellion broke out in the territory of the Teutonic Order, which the Polish king strongly supported. The Teutonic Order's forces were quickly defeated, and finally the Teutonic Order was expelled from the Prussian region, and as a result of further political machinations the Polish ruler established the Duchy of Prussia, with Poland itself gaining West Prussia and access to the sea. Krakow became a true Polish center of science and culture. And thanks to the generosity of the Polish ruler, Renaissance ideas that emerged in Krakow spread throughout the country. All of this also contributed to the strengthening of aristocratic values in our country, and so, thanks to clever tactics and unconventional moves, Poland became became one of the most powerful European powers. After recent wars, the Polish king focused on reducing autonomy in the newly acquired territories. A new method of crystal cutting emerged in Gdansk, positively impacting the city's prosperity and trade power. Over the following years, the crown systematically reclaimed land from the estates, weakening the political power of the Polish magnates permanently, albeit without their support. <coughs> After further strengthening royal authority and stabilizing the country, the Polish nobility lost its golden liberties. However, to appease the estates, a series of new privileges were introduced. The promising Polish queen Jadwiga came to the throne. The Polish king also introduced the new Polish order, causing some upheaval among merchants, though ultimately strengthening Polish merchants in international markets. Who can understand these merchants? To fill the budget gap in Poland, a gold mine in Hont was developed. Meanwhile, another war erupted between France and Austria. Honestly, France may not survive this. The capital of Poland was also moved to Warsaw. In 1464, with the help of allies, Poland attacked Bohemia to conquer Upper Silesia. After capturing Ratibors and Opol, Polish troops again invaded Hungary to seize the remaining Slovak provinces. Meanwhile, new infrastructural solutions were being devised in Poland. Unfortunately, rebellion broke out. 
because some Polish nobility refused to accept a woman on the Polish throne. However, the leader of this rebellion was not very astute. Queen Jadwiga swiftly ended the wars with Hungary, acquiring the rest of Slovakia and substantial funds, which were then allocated to expanding urban markets to facilitate trade. Major trade centers also experienced development. Unfortunately, in 1480, the Hussite heresy erupted. Truly, no one expected it. For unknown reasons, the Hussite heresy spread rapidly throughout Poland. And unfortunately, our young queen, when Hussitism gained enough support, decided to adopt it as the country's main religion. Thanks to this and the crown's support, it will spread more rapidly through missionaries. A change of faith was also enforced in the Prussian Dutch. It's unclear what happened to the rebels. They suddenly vanished. Regulations encouraging Catholics to convert to Hussitism were issued nationwide. The Polish parliament also passed laws promoting the national religion. Priests who did not convert to Hussitism were to forfeit their entire estates. It also became necessary to build new temples across Poland. Craft workshops emerged as a result. Queen Jadwiga, after conquering Silesia, became a great supporter of the local population, promoting Silesian culture throughout Poland. The famous scholar Nicholas Copernicus also visited the court. Additionally, an alliance was formed against Catholics with the Ottoman Empire. In 1501, Queen Jadwiga developed a strong interest in Prussian culture elevating it as a respected culture in Poland. This caused some administrative challenges, but also led to significant developments in Warsaw, which became the new capital. With a focus on infrastructure and issuing special edicts, the city embraced Silesian culture and values. Warsaw quickly rose to become one of Europe's major capitals, rivaling Constantinople, with Vienna, Paris and London trailing behind. These efforts contributed to Poland's cultural and economic growth. Queen Jadwiga invested heavily in advisors, whose diligent work restored administration nationwide. Rumors of a spreading heresy in Frankfurt hinted at impending changes. Meanwhile, Queen Jadwiga's promotion of Silesian culture gained momentum. What a surprise! The Habsburgs of Austria lost the title of Holy Roman Emperor, while Queen Jadwiga gained renown as a judicial reformer, establishing courts in every province. Poland's main trading hub shifted to the Baltic Sea. As administrative thinking evolved, efforts to enhance Poland's military quality gained momentum. The golden era of Poland fostered rapid rapid development of national ideas. Fascinated by Prussian culture, Queen Jadwiga renamed the country to Prussia while preserving Polish culture and traditions. This led to the overthrow of the same, with power consolidated under a Prussian absolute monarch. Consequently, the royal title was restored. Yes, I forgot that creating Prussia ejects it from the Holy Roman Empire. Elevating to a kingdom status was deemed essential for governance. Prussia's first goal was reclaiming Neumark alongside the formation of non-winged Prussian Hussar units. I know it's heresy, but don't blame me. It paved the way for a new future for Poland. Well, a Prussian future. General military commissariats were established, bolstering militarization. The nobility, however, didn't want to forget their rights and force the queen to restore the parliament. Though it wasn't called the same anymore, but only the Prussian parliament. Thanks to the first reform, changing the remaining culture in Poland to Silesian became even cheaper. The war for Neumark and a few other Brandenburg provinces will be quite easy because the current emperor is very weak. Additionally, their imperial armies are so feeble that they stand no chance against ours. Queen Jadwiga noticed she would need to improve the fort system, but let's be honest, she specialized in offense, not defense. So Prussia conquered provinces all the way to Berlin. After the wars, Prussia became pacifist, embracing peace. Unfortunately, the Austrian Archduchy defended the Teutonic Order. That Archduchy is truly mighty. Fortunately, the Ottoman Empire sided with Prussia. Following further wars, there was a period of modern manufactories expansion throughout the entire country. The Prussian army underwent reorganization which further strengthened it and essentially it bolstered royal authority. What's great is that despite the lack of a Polish crown, the Prussian economy was quite decent. And now the Prussian ruler leveraged this robust economy to maintain a significantly larger army than she normally could. This accelerated the professionalization of her forces. Yes, it was Frederick Wilhelm who introduced the Hussar formation. The Prussian army also needs to increase its maximum capacity. To achieve this, Prussia will require substantial additional funds, ideally sourced from our eastern neighbor. Especially since the Prussian army is quite modern, whereas the Moscow army army is not particularly formidable. Moscow's troops posed literally no challenge to the Prussian forces. With the funds secured, we can initiate the expansion of the Prussian army. Meanwhile, there were renovations and expansions in Berlin. Unfortunately, the monument wasn't expanded. And compared to Warsaw, Berlin is like a village. Poland also experienced a significant natural population increase, reflected in the military reserves. Prussia also reformed its government to enhance the militarization of its army further. The ruler already 
held absolute power in the country, the Prussian legal system. It was time to standardize the legal system in Prussia since it had been largely subject to the whims of local judges. To acquire additional funds, Prussia decided to attack Austria. Unfortunately, it's defended by the emperor. This will be a major war. However, the Prussian army was unstoppable and inflicted massive losses on the enemy. To ensure a steady flow of recruits, special local military commissions were established. Even the armies of the Archduchy stand no chance against the Prussian army. Yet, the revenues from this war weren't as significant. Prussian losses were minimal compared to the entire coalition. Next, in the war with Moscow, Podlasi and Volhynia were conquered, leading to the formation of Russia after the war's defeat. It seems the Russians enjoy the pain. There was also the Prussian-Lithuanian War, resulting in Lithuania adopting Hussite religion as its main faith and becoming a Prussian vassal. In Prussia, efforts were made to strengthen local power centralization for easier governance. This became feasible through bureaucratic reforms, making management significantly more cost-effective. While the Prussian army reached its maximum strength, it remained insufficient. Prussia sought new territories, sparking a war with the Kingdom of Bohemia over new lands. Conquering forts posed no challenge for the Prussian army and medieval fortifications fell in less than two months. It's becoming somewhat comical. For the Prussian army, annihilating their foes in the mountains literally was effortless. From the Czechs, Prussia acquired Lusatia and most of Moravia. Meanwhile, Prussia again attacked Austria to extract tribute. The weakening of the German Emperor led to the formation of a Protestant coalition with funds from the war with Austria. The Brandenburg Gate was expanded. Subsequently, a strike was made against Russia to reclaim territories for the former Grand Duchy of Lithuania. By the way, how long do your advisors live? This one is 84 years old. Prussia's top academies trained the best generals in battles and fort conquest. In the empire, a religious war erupted. Will the Protestant League prevail? Thanks to army and general training, the Prussian army became fully professional, significantly enhancing its quality. Leveraging the religious turmoil, Prussia attacked Austria. Yes, I won't get tired of it. To gain long overdue Hungarian possessions. Interestingly, despite Prussian intervention, the Catholic faction won the religious war in the empire. The war with the Austrian Archduchy was long and arduous. Austrian troops avoided clashes with the Prussian army. Austria had many forts to conquer and occupy. The war was prolonged by annoying British support, often launching raids on Dansk territory. Hence, militarization was enhanced, making the Prussian army even more effective. After years and finally catching Austrian armies, Austria lost the ability to field a full army. This war concluded with the annexation of part of Hungary. A Prussian espionage agency was established. This led to the development of a special cavalry tactic. The Hussars became more powerful. During one of many wars with Russia, Prussian doctrines for engaging large armies were developed. Thus, Prussia's land warfare doctrine became even more effective. On war, everything in war is very simple, but the simplest thing is difficult. Karl von Clausewitz will probably be a good advisor at court. Why did my Prussian militarization reset? What? <coughs> the cloth hall in Krakow was expanded. This allowed Prussia to reap even greater profits from trade. In the war with Russia, Prussia gained not only the last Lithuanian territories, including Kiev, but also Livonia to secure Baltic trade. Now, after completing the entire reform path of the Prussian army, the moment has come when Silesian culture became dominant in Poland. Thus, the successor to Jadwiga fulfilled his mother's dream and created a mighty Silesia. However, Polish traditions were still preserved. The Prussian monarchy remained in Silesia. But most importantly, Silesia could now draw from Hussite traditions as a form of military organization. Thanks to a unique defensive tactic, Prussian hussars became even more invincible. What's more, with Silesian culture already prevalent throughout the country, Silesia could field quite a few Hussar regiments in its armies. This ensured not only a formidable infantry, but also powerful cavalry on its own territory. And with a thriving economy, it could maintain a large army. Unfortunately, the future Silesian route isn't as potent as the Prussian one, but we'll have to accept that. An alternative could be the re-establishment of Poland. We could then have more Hussar regiments, but the defensive bonus during defense is much stronger. The Silesian Empire was then formed. Now, it's just a matter of training the new Hussar regiments. It was also time to build new recruitment buildings, significantly increasing Silesia's human resources. With high discipline, the Silesian army could now inflict significant losses on the enemy while sustaining fewer casualties. In the future, it can be increased by another 10%, developing economic and later offensive ideas. Coupled with bonuses to the Hussar, it will be unstoppable. The moment has come for the Silesian army with the Silesian Hussars to march on Prague, facing overwhelming enemy forces. 
forts were captured first and traps were set for the enemies within. Although I must admit, the enemy armies often fled at the sight of Cilician forces, but sometimes victory was achieved. They were even sometimes severely defeated. Certainly the new tactics worked well in defending Vienna. Despite the opponent's numerical superiority, they were routed by the Hussars. Shortly after, the final battle was fought near Vienna, after which the Austrian armies were almost wiped out. The enemy suffered immense losses. The whole of Bohemia was conquered, which might not sit well with Europe, but the Prussian army doesn't seem too concerned about that. In the battles themselves, we lost significantly fewer troops than our adversaries. And in this episode, you can see how I conquered Europe with Poland and much more.